get your body back in place, into position to meditate. Your back straight, facing forward, your eyes closed, hands in your lap. And then get your mind into position. That's the more difficult part. Actually, putting it in a position is not a problem. Just focus it on the breath. The breath is right there. You don't have to search around too much to find the breath. The difficult part is keeping it in position, trying to maintain a steady awareness. That takes some doing, because the mind is used to not being steady. It's used to jumping around. It actually has a sense that there's to be there's some entertainment value in jumping around. You get bored with one thing, you can jump to something else. And for a lot of people, that's where their freedom lies in their ability to think about anything they want to. But when you come right down to it, how much happiness comes from jumping around like that? Because once you jump from one thing, then you know you're going to have to jump from to another thing and then to another thing. And so no matter where you land, you start finding yourself just tensing up, ready to jump again. So the mind is constantly in this state of tension. What we do when we meditate is give it a good, solid place to stay, a reminder that you can stay there. You don't have to jump. Soon the mind can begin to relax a lot of its tension kind of dissolve into the object of the meditation. When you focus on the breath, you want to become one with the breath. Focus on the body, let the, your awareness become one with the body. Not an awareness that's ready to jump someplace else, but an awareness that seeps into the body. And it's the steadiness of your gaze that's going to help things seep into one another, come together here in the present moment. So as you stay with the breath, try to keep, keep your gaze, your focus on the breath. Keep it as steady as you can, as continuous as you can. The more continuous your, your focus, the more you see things, how things are connected. If your gaze isn't, con isn't steady, then you have to connect things in your imagination. It's like connecting dots. You play connect the dots with your, with your mind. There's a little bit of awareness here and a little bit of awareness over there and someplace else. And, but what was happening in between, you're not really sure, but you can guess. So you draw lines on your own. And whether those lines actually correspond to reality or not, you don't really know, because you weren't there. You're off someplace else. And this is the way most people's knowledge of the world gets built up. It's just connecting the dots. In fact, there are very few dots. Lots of lines. What we do when we meditate is to erase all the imaginary lines and make the awareness itself the line that connects things, because that's a lot of what you want to see. The Buddha gained awakening because he saw cause and effect and how they were connected. When this is, that is. From the arising of this comes the arising of that. He saw these things connected directly. And that was because his awareness was connected. So we stay with the breath as a way of practicing this continuous, connected, steady awareness. If you find yourself letting up, just come right back. In the beginning, our awareness is kind of like the phrases in music. There's a little bit of a phrase and then a pause, and then a little bit more and then a pause. But what you want to do is have an awareness that doesn't pause. It just keeps going, going, going. Because the breath keeps going. There may be a, a rhythm to the breathing. But underneath the the level of breath energy that you have in the in and out breath is another kind of energy that's continually there. It's kind of the background noise in the body. And that's what you want to focus on. This background energy. 
Sometimes you notice it as the, the energy that's in the body as the breath pauses between the in-breath and the out-breath, or between the out-breath and the in-breath. There's a slight pause, and there's still energy in the body. Let you know that the body sitting here doesn't totally dissolve away. You want to be in touch with that level of energy, too. In fact, the more you tune in to that level of energy, the less you need the in and out breath as you focus. It becomes just one aspect of the breath energy, which begins to go more and more calm, more and more calm, because you're, you're down at another level. You've tuned in to another level that's more continuous. That kind of level can be used as a basis for insight. When your awareness is, is continuous, the breath is continuous. You just stay there and together. That's what we're working towards. So try to be sensitive to even the slightest lapse in your awareness. Don't wait until the mind has already left the breath. Sometimes you'll feel a stirring in your awareness. You want to move. Things aren't as interesting as they were. For some reason or another, you, the mind begins to let up a little bit before it actually moves on to something else. Well, learn how to detect that. Then work with the breath, work with your focus and with it, and get around that tendency to stir a little bit and move on. This is why it's so important that the breath be comfortable. The more comfortable it is, the easier it is to stay with it. Once it's comfortable, then you have to watch out for the mind's tendency to kind of lose its focus, lose its sharpness. That's what we work with. Why we work with spreading the breath energy through the body, being aware of the different parts of the body, as a way of keeping ourselves awake and alert, even though things are getting comfortable. Because when we meditate, we're here to do work, not just to zone out or have a little stress re reduction. We reduce the stress so the mind can be more comfortable in the present moment, because it's got work to do in the present moment. There are things it's got to figure out. It's got to figure out why it's causing its self-suffering, exactly where it's causing its self-suffering. The Buddha's emphasis on the whole issue of karma and intention. Okay, what intentions are there in the mind that make us suffer? Why don't we see them? Why do we feel that those choices are so necessary we even forget that they're choices? Those are some of the big questions we've got to figure out. And the only way we can figure out is if we stay right here continually. Because usually those choices are made in the gaps, in the seams in our awareness, when we're off someplace else. In fact, the fact that there is a seam or a gap in your awareness is usually a sign that something's, a choice is going to be made in the mind. It's the mind's way of fooling itself, of hiding all of its choices behind the curtains. So when you sense that tendency to want to leave, re remember, okay, something important's coming up, and if you're not here to see it, you're going to miss it. and just follow through the same old pattern that you've been living through who knows for how long. You're letting the mind hide important things from itself. Why is it hiding? Well, look into it. What is it embarrassed about? What is it ashamed to show itself? What is it trying to deny? When you're operating from a sense of steady comfort, then it's easier to look into those things and not have to run away. So this issue of steadiness is very important. It allows you to see things that you wouldn't see otherwise. It plows right through the gaps in your awareness, in which the mind is hiding things from itself. And it zeroes in on the big issues in the mind. Why is the mind causing itself suffering? Why is it causing itself stress in ways that don't have to be there? I mean, in the three characteristics, the Buddha does point out that anything fabricated is stressful. But in the Four Noble Truths, he focuses more in on the issue of clinging and craving. The craving causes the clinging, the clinging and 
to the five aggregates. That's his basic definition of stress and suffering. That's what we've got to work on. Because that's the part of stress and suffering that's not necessary. And it's the part that once it's taken care of, then the other stress in the world just is not an issue at all. So what is this clinging? What is this craving? How do we hide itself, hide, our, hide it from ourselves? How can we learn to see through it? Because it's, it's because of ignorance that these things can happen in the mind. And the only way you can combat ignorance is to be as steady and consistent in your awareness as, you, as possible. So the issue of being steady in your awareness is not just a matter of concentration practice, but it's the basis for seeing things, for the basis for allowing discernment to arise. Because you're right there. When you're right there and watching what's happening, you can't help but see. The problem is we're all too often not there. Our gaze has been diverted. Our attention has been set off someplace else. So keep zeroing in on the breath, zeroing in on the breath. Don't let anything else pull your attention away. 